Good morning or hello or good evening. I don't know when you're actually watching this, but I am making a quick lesson video screen capture just to show you how to do the fitness tracker and um, fitness test submission for the Arch Academy of Benjamin Rush fitness tracker assignment. So I am making this on a snow day, June 19, uh, January 19th, 2024. And the actual day that we did this assignment was on Wednesday, January 17th, during the two-hour delay. So I'm showing you links here in the Google Classroom. So for my students in 2024, you can get them directly from the January 17th link. But in the event that you are from another school or that you are looking at this in a different year, then I want to show you how to get to this information. So on the main page of my website, KarabiHealthPE.com, which is the URL address for my Google Sites. On the bottom page, you have a, there's me, you have a health section and a physical education section. So you can click physical education and then scroll down just a little bit. And the pages that we're going to be looking at today is specifically fitness tests. So I will right click that to open that in a new tab and get to you in a second. Alternatively, when you go to the main page, you can just, alternatively, when you go to the main page, you can go and you can hover over the phys ed section, scroll down and click fitness tests again. On the fitness test page, when you scroll down, it tells you all of the information about the fitness test. You see this link up here, it says, click here to find the fitness test form. If you click there, it gives you an anchor link to the same page, but it scrolls you down to where the forms are. But for the most part, let's go up to the top and start from the beginning. The top of this page talks about fitness test concepts and principles and talks about the difference between health-related fitness and school-related fitness. It's a quick review from the beginning of the year. We talked about the components of these areas of fitness. We really quickly went over school-related fitness, speed, power, agility, balance, coordination, and reaction time. And we spoke about how within those particular areas of skill of related fitness, we don't, we don't focus on improving them so much quantitatively um, with a data or number increase like we do with the health related fitness components. But we work on those a lot in the areas of, of physical education and physical activity. So obviously we talk about speed, power, agility, balance, coordination, reaction time. And in, in terms of safety, we have to be um, considerate on what areas of fitness are um, most often um, used on a daily basis for protection and personal safety. And most of the time people talk about balance and reaction time as the areas that we need to focus on. Yeah, sorry, focus on personal safety. And then, of course, we also learned about the healthy related fitness components, cardiovascular endurance, muscular endurance, muscular strength, flexibility, and body composition. And I believe there was an open note test having to do with these areas earlier in the year. Um, uh, I might not have given it to your class, depending on what year it is. But in 2023-24 school year, we definitely had an open note test having to do with these components of fitness and the fitness tests. If you scroll down, there is a short video explaining the difference between the health and skill related fitness components that I didn't make, but that somebody else made. It's really beneficial and interesting. And then as you scroll further down, it talks about what are the fitness tests. So the fitness tests that we did, again, as a review, are is more or less the fitness gram uh, adapted by the created by um, the Cooper Institute, I guess, of sports science. And there's more videos down here talking about what the components of fitness tests are, muscular strength, muscular endurance, and flexibility, along with what is aerobic capacity. And with the tests, we measure muscular strength by right angle push-ups, muscular endurance by partial curl-ups, Hamstring flexibility by a modified sit and reach. I choose to do a modified sit and reach back saver instead of a uh, sit and reach. We test lower back function for trunk lift, which more or less is still part of flexibility. And then uh, we don't really test body composition, but we do an estimate of body composition 
based on um, the uh, body mass index um, estimations with height, weight, uh, gender, or biological sex, depending on what the child chooses to put, and um, of course the height and weight. With that being said, um, we measure cardiovascular endurance via aerobic capacity, aka VO2 max, and we use an online calculator. Uh, we actually use a spreadsheet that was provided free of charge by the Cooper Institute and Fitnessgram uh, years ago. Um, so the formula doesn't change, so we still use that spreadsheet. They have since stopped giving us that spreadsheet, which is a shame, but it was a really, a really nice uh, resource that they gave to us. And then what should I get? The question of what should I get is uh, in the healthy fitness zones and levels as of June 2023, uh, I was able to coordinate with a few teachers, other teachers to create a non-binary category too. So there's male, female, and non-binary. Then there's a suggested average mile time by age and sex. Uh, the suggested mile time by age, sex, and ability. What should I get on the pacer? And then what is the pacer? There's this whole thing about what the pacer is. So the first six minutes of this video is all about review. So let's go back down to the forms. All the forms we need are right here. And we're working on, we're working for what, the fitness tracker with aerobic capacity. Um, we're working with this one, the fitness tracker with individual aerobic capacity. And of course, the healthy fitness zone. So, and here's how you would report your scores. But again, since this is 2024, the 2023 24 school year, we're going to just go with what we did on Wednesday, January 17th. And here's the step by step process filling out your tracker. The very first thing you need to do is have your fitness test scores. So, you, if you remember your fitness test scores, then you can then do this. But is if you left the paper, that is if you left the paper in school or something, since it is a snow day. But um, if you have your paper or if you uh, just didn't finish doing this yet, then the very first step is click on this link, which tells you to make a copy of the fitness tracker. And you make a copy of the fitness tracker, like so. So I'm making a test copy. And it says... One, you should have been prompted to make a copy of this and not make a copy now. And then it says change the title. Number two is right away, change the title. I'm going to highlight that for future people because no one's changing the title. Everybody that's sending me questions about it is not sent, is not changing the title. And that's really messing me up. And it says change file names for directions. And then up at the top, it tells you what to do. So I'm just going to put my name. Oops, let me go ahead and do that. It tells me to, what to do. So I'm going to put my name. And then I'm going to put an underscore, and then I'm going to send them in first period because there is no such thing as first period. And then I'm going to keep the words personal fitness tracker with AC, and there we go. I don't even need them with AC, I can just take that out. So there's my title, Karabi First Period Fitness Tracker. And then I told you, it's not on the directions, but I told you you should save this someplace to make it easy to save. So I'm going to click the star button, and I'm going to save it in a bookmark called Website Tabs I'm Working On Already. And that way I can always know that it's right here when I'm looking for it. And I can actually delete this because I did that already. Okay, so I know that it's always going to be in this at the bottom and that call it a day. Okay, so now after you do that, it tells you to do a bunch of other things. And uh, just to make it easy, I don't have to go to this tab again. I'm going to open up the High School Healthy Fitness Zone, which again, if you want it, is available right here underneath the word level up when it comes to healthy fitness zones. But in any case, I will go back to this track. I don't need this yet. I don't need this yet. But we're going to come back to it. Okay. So then after I click on that, I'm going to go to the tab down here that says Personal Fitness Tracker. And you'll notice that there's three samples up here. You need to kind of just leave that stuff there. Leave it. Make sure that it is accurate. Okay.
And in any case, as we're going, you can see that there's lots of different uh, variables in here. And after I go and open up this form, I'm going to put my name. So I'll put my name. And then it automatically fills in the next four rows. Let's put my last name. It automatically fills in the last four rows. And then over here, the first two rows will say baseline yellow, midterm, and green. And then there's other choices too. So I can do personal checkpoint. I'll do that in the future. I'll do teacher directed checkpoint when I tell you to do that. And then, of course, the final. You're supposed to use this tracker throughout the rest of the school year. I, I identify as male, so I'm going to click an M here in both, in both rows. I am currently 48 years old, so I'll put my real age. You're probably going to tell me I'm too old to do this. I am 5'6 right now. Oops. And I have the weight blacked out so that nobody can see it. You can see it up here in the formula, so if students get too embarrassed and I'm working with them, they can just hide the formula bowl bar by clicking view and then hide the, for the formula bar so they just unclick show but right now I am heavy so I'm 190 pounds and then that will automatically go and give me a, an approximate body mass index which also is blacked out for everybody's privacy so then I know that the top row is baseline and the bottom row the second row is midterm, and I'm going to look and see how I did in the muscular strength, endurance, and flexibility section. So in the curl-up section, I in my baseline, I was able to do 25. And in my midterm, I did 30 in a minute. In my push-up section for the baseline, I was able to do 25. And then for my uh, midterm, I was able to do 35, which was a little bit of an increase. My sit and reach, I think I got nine inches. It was really bad. And then in the midterm, I think I got, I think I got nine inches too. So there was no improvement there. I did get more than 11 both times on the trunk lift. You can't put symbols. I told you on your forms to put 11 plus. So, I mean, you could put 12 if you wanted to or something like that. If you went past 11, we didn't measure it. So there's no really way of knowing. But here's where it gets good. Now, as you can see, we have the aerobic capacity section. And on the pacer laps in the fall, when I was demonstrating, I only demonstrated one minute. So I did seven laps. And seven is not high enough. It tells you NA. Seven is not a high enough number to get me a, a response for a little capacity. But in the midterm, the one time that I did it, I ended up getting 25 laps again before I stopped. And that gave me an aerobic capacity of 37. 0.67 and in my mile time in the fall I did a 9 minutes and 35 seconds and then in my mile time for the midterm in between the fall uh, fitness test and the current fitness test you may recall that I went and uh, tore my quadricep I've been going through rehab I did uh, take do a mile run um, two weeks ago, and I was at 10.50, so much slower, much slower. You can also see that my mile time at 42.5 for my age, uh, for aerobic capacity is much higher than the 37.67 at 25 laps. I should be able to go much further in the pacer, but I didn't that day. Who knows? We don't put any information over here because this is for a walk test, an alternative walk test to the run. And that's what I do for male. Now, before I go any further, let's see what happens. We see this aerobic capacity, and everybody keeps saying, what do I need for the mile to pass? What do I need for the pacer to pass? And everybody refuses to look at the column that says aerobic capacity, like I said. Um, but, like, what do I need? And everybody is different. So, let's. What, what would happen if I changed my age to 17, if I was your age, if I was a junior in high school? Based on my birthday, I would be 17 by May 1st. You see the aerobic capacities change tremendously. So for my age, I don't have to perform as well in a mile to be able to do uh, so well. So for my for a 17-year-old, my pacer aerobic capacity went up, whereas my mile ones both went down. What happens if I stay 48 for the time being? Actually, no. What happens if I go and change my gender? So I go and I put female, and as you can see, the aerobic capacity of the mile also changed again. 
And if I put non-binary, it goes to a different number, which I think for the pacers, the same as male. So if you change your sex or gender, or you change your age, or you change your height, which I didn't do either, but you change your height, or you change your weight, it all changes what your numbers were supposed to be. So we wanted to make sure that everybody understands that. So that's what we do so far. Now, we go and we then we're told that we need to compare these numbers with what's in our healthy fitness zone. And on the fitness test paper, you would go in the, the columns, like, you know what, let me open up the fitness test paper so I can also show you that. I wasn't going to, so I wasn't prepared for this. But we're looking at the midterm fitness test rough draft handout. So, all right, now on my t I have my name up top, and then I and what I did was I, I was supposed to. I'm going to split my screen so that you can see everything. Hopefully, it works on this screen capture. I don't know if it does or not. I'm going to go back to this tracker now and just put the same scores. Because I made, uh, I, I, I didn't make them up, but I don't have my paper. So the baseline was, oops. So I reiterate before that the curl up test, my baseline was 25. So that number was already there. Whatever the test date was, I'm just going to put today's date. For the sake of argument, my score today, I got 30. And then I will go and do the push-ups two. The push-ups were 25. And then I ended up 35 and sit and reach was nine and nine. I didn't put the date. Trunk lift was 11 and 11. And the number of laps on the pacer, I ended up with, oops, I have to go over. I ended up with seven laps on the pacer the first time because all I did was demonstrate one minute. And then for this, this time around, I went and I got 25 laps on the pacer. The aerobic capacity for the pacer in the fall, it doesn't matter. I don't need it. I mean, I can put it if I want, but I, I don't really need it. But for the midterm, I ended up with 37.67. For the, I don't need it because we didn't do aerobic capacity in the fall from it for um, the baseline test. And then for the midterm, we have, uh, what was my time? For the mile, my time was 10.50. For the, in, in the spring, my time was in the fall was 9.35, so I did less. And my score, we're going to put 35.54. So my scores on the fitness test right now are pretending that I am uh, 17, not 48. At 48 years old, I passed everything except for the pacer. I didn't pass the pacer, but I passed everything else. So now back over to this form, I'll just make this real big for a second. I go and I, abdominal strength, the muscular endurance was the curl ups. I had 25 tests and I had 30 here. And then uh, am I in my healthy fitness range? So I don't know, am I in my healthy fitness range? So what I, I guess I have to do split again, sorry. So am I in my healthy fitness range? So I go and I look, we know that I said I was biological male, identify as male. I'm pretending that I was 17. So here's, I highlighted the page that I want to do. I took it in blue. Hopefully you can see that. And so I go back now to, am I in my healthy fitness zone? So I need it according to this partial curl up between 24 and 47. I ended up at 30. So yes, so I put a two. And then did I improve? Is 30 more than 25? Is 30 more than 25? Yes. And then the total on that side is three. Now, without talking you through it, I'm just going to say the score is really fast, so you can try to follow along, slow this down if you need to. But my score for the push-ups was 35, and I only need it between 18 and 35, so I maxed out what a 11th grader needs to get, so I did that, and that was more. Which is great, so there's three more. And then the sit and reach was the same. I need it to get greater than 8 inches. I did, so I passed. I did not improve, so I get two points. The trunk lift I passed, but I don't get improving points for that. Number of laps 25 and 7, I did improve that, so I get the one there. 
My rubber capacity is 37.67. For a 17-year-old, that is not good enough, so I did not get any points. So I put 0 for 17. My time for the pacer is 10.50. And that is slower, so I did not get the improvement point. But, and my rubber capacity, again, is 35.54, and that's not what I need either. So before I go any further, looking at this the test score here, you look and you look at the categories. We have aerobic capacity. I'll temporarily highlight it. You have aerobic capacity in green, and then in yellow, you have the laps or the pace or the mile walk run. The times for the mile walk run are estimates based on the research articles that I post on my website. The laps on the pace are also estimates. There's no way to be able to really say what you absolutely need because only the aerobic capacity is what matters. So stop looking at the other thing that's just for your benefit, for maximum health, but and what you should be able to get, but we're really talking about green or yellow. We're really talking about green, right? Now, aerobic capacity. So we go back down to the this uh, test, and then uh, I'll add this now. So now we go and we look at these columns and what we need to do is total up this entire column and for the sake of video, I can do it that way because why not? So I count them all up and I have three, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven 10, 11 points so far. I got 11 points counting my improvement points. And then I went and I'll just make that bold. And then I went and I uh, will uh, copy and paste for now. Then it says, how many tests did you take? I took all six, so I get 12 points for that. Add them all up. That's 23 out of 24. And then if I divide 23 by 24, that tells me I got a 95.8 for the test. So yay, 95.8 for the exam. So that's it. That's what you do, but then I get these numbers and now I have to take those numbers and I have to go back and fill out the Google form. And this is where I get my actual grade. Do not turn in the tracker yet. You will be told when to turn in the tracker and you're not turning it in yet. So now I go and I put in my last name. I put in the name that my teacher calls me by. So if you have a nickname, you can put that. I put in my period. Um, I'll just put second since first period is not an option since I don't really teach first period. It is the midterms and it goes on to the next page. Oh, you know what? Let's be, let's pretend I put six period. I'll tell you why in a second. How many of the six total tests did you take for this set of fitness tests? I took all six of them. That's going to give me 12 points on my spreadsheet. How many of the six total tests did you pass? I passed four of all the tests. How many of the five tests not getting a trunk lift did you improve on? I, I improved on all five of the tests, not counting the trunk lift. And then it says, are you a student in Mr. Friday's class? If you're in second, fourth, fifth, or seventh period, then click no. But let's assume for a second that I am. I click yes. And yes takes you to another page, which talks about the school district student performance measure um, SPM goals that I happen to be using six period for. And it asks the six period students, did you complete all six tests to the fitness and midterm? It asks you again. So you just say yes or no. Most of you will say yes. Did you pass the right angle push up test in your midterm test, reaching at least the minimum number required to get into the healthy fitness zone? Your options are yes or not yet. So I'm going to put yes because I did. Did you improve your right angle push up tests? And did you improve in either the mile, walk, run, or your pacer? when compared to your baseline fitness test. And I did. So I improved both and all three of those things. So I will put that. And then if I need to put any of the additional information, I would type that. And then I'll go and click Submit. So that is all there is to it. Two points for each test passed, two points for each test taken, one point extra credit. This is a 25 minute long video. The first six minutes are reviewing things about the fitness tests. Then I showed you step by step how to be able to do this. Um, once you do it once, you're going to be able to submit these things in probably 10 minutes. If there's any questions, feel free to email me.
Have a great day.